Hello, hello, and welcome to the PTA Global interview series. Uh, you cannot see me. Thanks to a technical glitch, I lost my camera just before we started. Uh, I'll keep trying, but it's really not important that you see me. It's more important that you see Peter. So right. thank you, Peter. Thank you for joining us. And you're going you're gonna to have the whole show here. Thanks for joining us today. Hey, Dan, you bet, man. My, uh, my honor. Always a pleasure to team up and chat with you. And uh, love, love to have your uh, coaches and trainers joining us. Most excellent. So for those of you joining, uh, one thing I'm going to just right away say is uh, there is a box that says uh, questions. That's how we'll communicate, right? So you can talk, talk in the uh, chat, you know, chat in the question box. I have that open and I'll be able to see it. Uh, if somebody can just ping me and say, yep, I can hear you. Yes, I can see Peter. We are good to go. That'll make me feel a little bit better after this technical glitch. Uh, Ruby did send a message, say, what time will it start? Hopefully you're there. Yes, Annette, Peter, we were just talking about this. That's Annette Light right. is on. That's how the universe flows. <laughs> oh, that's great. Annette, Annette is how are on. You? <laughs> Brilliant. All right. Well, like I said, it's not important that they see me. It's more important they see you. So here's a few housekeeping things I want to throw out there real quick. Uh, everybody is muted. And again, that's just so we don't have a lot of background noise uh, and things going on that, that might disrupt. So uh, if you have anything that you want to say or ask, please do use the question box. I'm seeing them come in right now and we'll make sure and address as much of that as we can. Uh, we're going to run 35-ish minutes, maybe 40 somewhere in there. We'll have an opportunity for questions toward the end. Uh, we want to make sure and get to all of those, so make sure and type them in there, and I'll ask them, I'll, I'll remind you as we go. Uh, there's a panel a box that says handouts, okay, uh, on your screen. Do make sure that you click on that because you'll see some great handouts there uh, with twist conditioning promotions and offers and more about the company and what Peter does. And we have some stuff in there from PTA Global as well. So make sure you do those uh, handouts. Here's the good news, everybody. There's no exam for the webinar. Yeah, okay, common question. Uh, is there a test? No, there's no test. You're welcome for that. Uh, no, uh, no worries on that one. Uh, so no test, no CECs. Just sit back, enjoy the ride, uh, and, and enjoy what you hear, have to hear here from uh, my good friend Peter. With that, Peter, yes, can sir. you please you know, tell us a little about you? Tell us about your journey. Tell us how you, you got to where you are. Well, yeah, and keeping it in the, the context and perspective uh, of coaches and trainers and professionals building their career. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in Canada from the, the east side of Canada, came out to beautiful west coast Vancouver, north of California, lots of oceans, rainforest, mountains. So rugged playground uh, for us to use our physicality and stay active. But I did my uh, master's in coaching science, studying all the sciences that affect how we can perform with our body and mind uh, in sport and in specific sports. And I went on to uh, coach uh, for 11 years as a strength and conditioning coach and an on ice performance coach. Uh, skill coach in the van, uh, with Vancouver Canucks in the National Hockey League for uh, 11 years. And at that time, I was also in the off season running my own uh, high performance camp. So been very blessed on that path to have had my hands on uh, chipping in on about 700 professional and Olympic athletes that I've uh, helped along the way. And then with my, uh, my business, I set up my, my goal originally was with my camps was to never have a facility. And I ended up with 10 of them. And with a great team of coaches, we've helped about 20,000 uh, kids, high school athletes and college athletes and about 2000 pro and Olympics. So that, that was that main path of passion that relates to child, the champion and lots of research on how we integrate our brain and body and, and validating methods along the way with different peers. Now, uh, next chapter was a chapter of building education around the world, setting up master teachers after writing my methods, systemizing them into courses. Really encourage everyone listening, even if it's for your own eyes, write. Package what you believe in, your philosophy, your training, your coaching, your methods into a system that you would help you teach it in an organized way to someone else. 
that is your best learning experience to confirm how you do things with confidence. And of course, we'll always learn and grow from there. So that chapter, Dan, I had, uh, I distributed about a thousand product SKUs in 33 countries as a pretty sophisticated business that were the tools we use to practice our craft in functional training, sport performance, uh, education, and gyms. This chapter, I'm kind of coming full circle and it's a little bit more of me being hands-on teaching and, and right with the heart that started me. Um, I'm still building new education around the world in sports medicine, functional training, kids, sport performance, uh, brain training, holistic health, a little bit wider spectrum. So we just don't help people get scholarships and gold medals, but we help them when they're they're in a pickle and their backs are against the wall and they're against the ropes. And how do we chip in and help them out when they need it uh, the most? With, with those type of things, coaching, education, uh, business, and so on, I, I was blessed to partner with the, the China government to help modernize uh, how they train and rehab their summer and winter sports. And uh, as you do, spend a lot of time traveling around Asia and around the world, just showing up, enjoying teaching and, and lecturing and, and helping folks out. Um, suffice to say, I'll, I'll say, in today's society, it feels really good to travel the world and help other people be great and make friends and learn other cultures and show up respectfully and figure out how we can be stronger together. That's that's the long term path that I'm on. Oh, man, what a path. And 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 uh, indeed, having seen you uh, and following you. Uh, overseas, that's exactly it. It's just uh, you do that brilliantly, elevating, uh, uh, motivating, instilling passion in people from one point of the globe to the other. So well done, Peter. Now, along that pathway, at some point, you got connected with PTA Global. How the heck did that happen? PTA Global goes uh, way back to the PT on the net days, you know, uh, Richard Boyd and so on. And uh, from authoring and and of course uh, PTA Global's uh, philosophy was pulling together a, a lot of coaches and uh, teachers, scientists, authors to collaborate and input on content, uh, which everybody loves. So I go back to you know uh, friends and peers and really respecting the folks like you know Richard Boyd and Rodney Corn. Of course, met uh, Ian and and Bobby along the way. Um, or earlier and then that, interestingly, um, kind of met Michelle uh, Delcourt more through PTA Global, but prior to that, his partner who co-invented Viper, Simon Bennett, was the uh, master teacher and host site in Alberta for the, our Twist Sports Strength Link System certifications, which were about uh, training loading motion and integrating movement and balance with strength. and. Um, so it goes way, way, uh, way, way back uh, that far. Of course, uh, Meeting of the Minds were a couple of seminal events, uh, bringing together a lot of presenters who spoke for a short time on their own dime, and people like to get paid well and talk long. <laughs> but everybody, I remember, was so enthusiastic to come together so we can enjoy friendship and fellowship and learn from each other. Um, and I think that's really what drew everyone to PTA Global was not only chipping in to contribute uh, to the content, but learning from each other and just the, the respectful, positive community uh, that it was uh, founded on. Oh, I love it. And, and Annette's on the line. So she was part of that. And, and, hey, hey, and Annette, I, all right. <laughs> that's, and there's someone I can learn a lot from. <laughs> I think we all can. By I'm the way. I'm trying for me to stop talking. Get Annette on here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's coming up, buddy. Three more weeks. All right. Three more. <laughs> and, and on that note of, of comments here, Eves Paul from Bermuda says, so stoked to see you, Twister Man. Do I ever miss you, brother? So, uh, oh, oh, wow. There, there's a, there's a coach and a teacher with a huge heart. Yeah. I love you, brother. Thanks for joining. And uh, it's good to be here. Um, right now I, I should mention, uh, idea China and uh, ideal world. I was very honored to bring to China and help them set up there and it's running right now. So I would normally be in, uh, Pudong, the financial district of Shanghai, enjoying that experience. 
And one of the many, many silver linings that we could, there's so much opportunity and challenge and during COVID-19, I usually do 80 flights a year. I'm doing zero this year. And, uh, you know, and here I am available and chatting, to, uh, chatting together. Um, so a great opportunity. Uh, perfect. And I remember uh, when I reached out to Peter and said, you know, can can you do this this uh, interview on this date? He said, well, I'm presenting at Idea China, but uh, I'll I'll just be warmed up. I can do it. And I thought, wait a minute, how's that going to work out? But uh, yeah, indeed, it did work out for for a lot of folks. And it's good to keep your ground, you know, your feet on the ground for a little while. Good break. You guys, want to, hear, you guys want to hear all the Mandarin that I've learned? <laughs> Let's okay, hear ready? It. I'm gonna I'm gonna roll it all off. Okay, okay, that's it. Well done. I yeah. think that's one or two words that I know, Pete. Worst person in the world for languages. I I need some I need some mentorship for sure. Sure. Well. I bought the book Chinese for Dummies a couple of years ago, and I know, uh, you know, uh, one or two words less than you do. So <laughs> clearly it wasn't it wasn't uh, at the level I needed it to be. Well, you know, for the listeners out there, again, a reminder, we're about to jump into Childhood Champion, you know, the five game changing guidelines for coaching to the next level with you. As those questions pop in, uh, pop into your mind do make sure you throw them in that question panel so that we can dig into to, to, to more meat uh, of, of the, the actual interview. Before I do that though, there is a common question I like to ask all of these pros, all these experts, these, these men and women with so many years experience. Um, Peter, looking back now, not to age ourselves here, and of course now they can't see me, so for all they know, I'm 20 years old, which is beautiful uh, and I have a lot more hair like you. Um, that we can all, you know, aspire. But the, the, looking back, 20 plus years of, of of coaching and working with athletes and working with with folks trying to to make changes, what did you see 20 years ago in this industry that were the traits, characteristics, education, uh, whatever it may be that 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 really helped that coach be next level successful? In other words, you know what? They made it. They did well. They were able to earn a living. They were able to make a career out of it. What were those traits, characteristics, et cetera, that still today, 20 plus years later, are remain true, remain the same? Yeah, I, I think uh, for, for that next level, and I, I think we all know, um, you know, in some ways, anything that gets someone moving is a good thing. Uh, but on other ways, you know, we can each do the same exercise program and that's not necessarily true because uh, Dan might get phenomenal results and uh, Annette might get average results and Peter might develop pain and dysfunction and an injury. So uh, moving well is what's important. Science and education doesn't change the, the, the top people, of course, today. And you can look at that as a problem or an opportunity. There's such a wide spectrum of people in the field online and offline. Lots of discussion around that um, with no education and other than a, an enjoyment to exercise and getting folks going on Instagram and so on. You know what? Every, everyone's trying their best with what they have to make a, an impact. And so that's a positive thing. But science and education is what the top coaches uh, have whose careers have longevity and elevation. They're a leader of one. They lead themselves. They show up professionally and prepared and in shape, uh, good communicators, tons of passion and the art of coaching, you know, uh, great at uh, communicating, teaching, cueing, and we call it active coaching. My head's on a swivel, I'm, I'm speaking, I'm engaged. And uh, I the, the art of orchestrating how someone physically moves their body uh, with my language, uh, those things still today are very important and they're true of the top people. I love it. Brilliant. And if you haven't had the opportunity to attend a session or do training with Peter, uh, you it, make sure you do. You know, granted, uh, we're, you know, our feet are grounded, like we said right now. Uh, but what he, exactly what he just described is what you will get to see. Uh, no doubt about it. That's how that's how the man crush on Peter started with me. So I'm just throwing it out there. I got a little bit of I got a little bit of crap for it before the webinar from the wife today. She's like, you get the, you get a webinar with your an interview with your man crush. Today. I say yes, I do. But yeah, that's because you got to see this man teach. So uh, definitely like take a webinar the, and date. Then really, I feel like I'm on. <laughs> 
good. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is awesome. That, that, jump, jumping into you know coaching <laughs> youth, which um, I you know in my limited experience uh, comparatively to where you come from, yeah, uh, is is a skill set that I believe uh, not everybody can develop or wants to develop maybe you know they, they they prefer to work with older adults they prefer to work with physique competitors they you know, we, you you tend to go directions that really that you're passionate about and there's so much opportunity uh in coaching youth and it's so dang rewarding that's the next generation that's the that's that's yeah, the health yeah. and fitness of yeah. of the folks that are going to be making decisions uh in one form or another for our future what an incredible opportunity, and that is certainly one of the areas you specialize in. What is your philosophy, Peter, for, for, for training youth, and how is it different from training, you know, again, a general population, older adults, physique competitors? Um, well, num number one, uh, right away, and I've got a shirt here. Actually, I've got two shirts. I've got a uh, PTA Global shirt. <laughs> Look at that in good Canadian colors and uh, China colors, so that all fits. And I've got a, it's a, a sorry, a twist beast, twist beast. And uh, it's a fun word we use for pride and it's what we award it on each Friday at our uh, youth athlete camps that are going on still right now. And, um, and it's awarded to who shows up with working the hardest, the most present, uh, who does things that help those around them elevate and succeed. So it's we, not just me. And it's things about how they show up. And a lot of it is, of course, around work ethic. And, and uh, we're developing, my philosophy is we're, we're developing the person uh, inside the athlete. Uh, girls as well, we, we actually have 60% female attendance. Um, but we turn boys into men and men into uh, athletes and men into captains, men into warriors and men into leaders. But underneath that is training the person. Number two, uh, training movement, not muscle. Number three, training general athleticism, not sports specific, the younger the age is. And that respects that, you know, sport does streamline them too early to too narrow a skill set. So they're not generating their whole uh, cognitive and brain development around motor control and programming that they could. So we artificially build athleticism in the weight room since kids aren't playing as many sports now. And a lot of that is also the philosophy we need. It's a philosophy of growth and maturation for long-term athlete development when you're looking at youth. It's not this week, next month. It's laying the right foundation in the right time for a 10-year plan. And a lot of that is, last I'll say, Dan, not treating them like miniature adults. They're not miniature adults. Uh, they're distinct youth at different levels of times and paces of growth and maturation, meaning younger is more neural maturation. So the philosophy is give them lots of variety for their brain. In the middle at pu uh, peak puberto, when they get long clown feet and we see they're gonna go through a peak height velocity, they're tall, they're a little bit awkward. Of course, you have longer levers, what can you do? You can run faster and jump higher, which is why you get so many injuries stopping and landing and changing direction. So there's a focus on movement skills and not until they're older do they have the circulating hormones to even achieve muscle girth and the emotional maturity to handle more structure with that. So the philosophy of training youth shifts depending on what stage of their growth and maturation that they're in. Well, that 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 explains uh, why I was so challenged with training youth when you said don't treat them like miniature adults. I, I was kind of, you know, expecting them to stand at attention and say yes or no, sir, and, and all that stuff. It didn't quite work out that way. It was more like herding cats. So it, it wasn't yeah, until I raised some kids of my own that I figured out what I was doing wrong. Yeah, you know, and, and at the same time, I, I hear you and classroom management would be the number one art of uh, organizing youth and keeping them focused and so on. But the great thing is, is that, you know, coaches have a different voice than parents. We might speak the same message, but a different voice and kids do look at coaches. And I, I, I believe if we believe in the kids, they believe in themselves and they adjust how they do. But we do get people from too cool to school and hiding at the back of the line and not paying attention. 
they don't pay attention. I kick them off the floor. Next day they show and they pay attention. Um, we do want to develop a positive relationship with exercise and training, but we also want to see them standing at the front of the line, ready to go, setting the pace, uh, helping impact the room and so on. So step by step, um, it's a maturation process for how they show up. Oh, I love it. I can already tell right now I'm going to have to have my 14 year old watch this. He's a evolving athlete, dual sport athlete, and he's going to have you to. You guys are doing great stuff together. I love uh, seeing it. Thanks, on buddy. Media. Very inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> All good. It's good stuff. Now, what about, let's kind of jump into uh, uh, another piece of this, and that's mindset. So, you know, you like to say how we think affects everything. And how, how do those mindsets and attitudes, what are those mindsets and attitudes that, you know, you really need to instill in the youth that allows them to elevate to the next level in sport? Well, uh, number one, and it sounds a little bit uh, hokey, um, but it's true for everyone and it's true for you and I, and it's true for uh, everyone joining us today, as well as youth, but youth are just beginning to have the opportunity to develop uh, this and it is an element of resiliency uh, it's resiliency with belief and it's a can do attitude it's an i can do it attitude and you get that we're all in such a powerful position to affect this in youth because we're teaching and coaching exercise and exercise is about produce uh, imposing artificial stimulus on the body that causes us to fail in different ways, whether it's muscular, energetics, uh, neurally, coordination, fatigue, and we cause failure to stimulate positive adaptations. Um, because we at TWIST use a lot of our methods as integrating balance, strength, movement, core into every inch of every rep, every second of every drill, it's a lot to coordinate for the brain easy to break down athletes, easy for them to see failure unless their bodies link together perfectly. So we produce failure every day. And what that does is it gives them the opportunity later in the workout or, or next week to improve. They fail, they improve, they fail, they improve. That's the number one mindset is to see failure as evidence you're on the process of improving and a natural product of it and you believe you can and you stay in the game. Over half of youth and half of adults uh, would see failure as evidence that they cannot and what do they do? Of course, they quit. That doesn't mean if they're trying, to, that could be if they're trying to lose 10 pounds of body fat um, or they're trying to achieve something, uh, achieve anything. It is failure confirmation that you can't or is it a natural process of succeeding that you graduate through and you have a can-do uh, attitude with that uh, we try and give them instill in them you know there's no there's no limits to what they can achieve everyone around them is going to set limits everyone around them is going to tell them to be realistic everyone around them is going to tell them what they can't do everyone's going to tell them around they get told growing up be quiet no don't do that uh, we're, we're receive negative judgment from from everywhere to be 100% themselves, feel confident, um, but to have a mindset, I can do it, Dan, and there are no limits. So to get curious and passionate about pursuing and enjoying that path to see how, how far you can go, how high you can go. Uh, it's brilliant. And as we know, as the listeners know, uh, athletics, team sports, uh, those are things that set you up for uh, success in life. It, it you the lessons learned in exactly what you said and the ability to work as a team. On top of that, uh, they set you up for success in life. And so that I love that that can do that. You know, accepting that failure is the path to success. That's life, man. I mean, gosh, you know, it I, is, I, it I, is. I've been around the sun a few times, and uh, there is no question that you're going to see plenty of it. And it's all about how you view it. So I love that. So that's the mental, right? The can-do attitude, the the, yeah. the understanding that I can that I, that if that fail is the, is a good thing. What about let's jump a little bit into the physical development. So the the actual phys physical development for youth. Um, what are some of the main 
uh, needs that youth athletes need to train. Yeah, and that, that's that's an interesting one to really stick to our principles and do right by the, the child, the youth, the young adult, uh, because a lot of parents want to see evidence of a good workout. You know, the, the uh, their kid is crushed and fatigued and sweaty, and sometimes that is the byproduct of a great workout. Sometimes it's doing too much too soon and with no purpose in science. And so we, we need to lay a foundation. This is a foundational stage, so essential movement skills, mobility, freedom of motion, uh, stability, the, the timeliness of muscle stiffness across joints when we land, stop, or load uh, weight onto our body, and really, and balance. Balance is both equilibrium, uh, it's fall proofing, but it's also a balanced body, unified, linked together. So movement skill, mobility, stability, balance, and then integrating those attributes into strength and making sure that the kid's strength training actually requires those four attributes because a lot of fitness strength training does not uh, require uh, any of those. And so, But you can develop strength training that requires all of them all the time. Those also, when they're present as a foundational element, uh, balance, move, uh, movement, skill, mobility, stability, and then loaded with strength. Uh, when those are present, Dan, uh, those stimulate uh, more of your brain's computations to organize and instruct the body to do the right thing. So we're getting a good brain-body connection. We're getting a smarter brain. And th those, those are the foundational things before what many may be tempted to jump to and what the adults want to see and what we may use in our marketing terminology is speed. We want to jump higher, run faster and accelerate. And we ex teach acceleration before the kid even knows how to decelerate. So deceleration before acceleration, how to land before we jump and, and so on. Get, get the foundational things to keep them injury free. And that when we get into ballistic hot, hot, you know, um, high explosive power, speed, agility, quickness, reaction skills, then we have the foundation to uh, support that. So uh, brilliant. And just to wrap my head around it, and for the listeners, can you expand on the, the order? So is there a particular order that these are best trained in? Mobility, stability, balance. Is it, is, is there, is it a periodization order or is it a, a part of a session, a, a training session order or both? Can you give some examples of how that might apply? Yeah, there's, uh, there's certainly o overlap on, in a long-term periodization in that all of those attributes may appear in a workout, uh, but earlier on in starting, and we tend to integrate um, a, lo a lot of the preparatory work uh, all along the way, even for our mature professional athletes, and then longer into the session for kids into the dynamic warm up. Uh, the dynamic warm up isn't just a time to warm up and get the heart going and get sweating, although that's a good thing. It's, it's a time to get alert and present in the moment and focused and really in tune to your body. It's, uh, so, kids, a lot of the training is to get them connected to their body to understand what it fe feels like and how to orchestrate and control their body. We're making the body and the muscles compliant to the mind's commands and for them to be present in that. So I, I like to create drills where, you know, we don't allow phones into our gym and uh, we don't have any TVs. We don't have any monitors to look at. There's lots of good things that can happen from all those. And certainly we would use some technology and testing and assessing, of course, and maybe some social pictures for uh, fun and recognition. But overall, uh, no, no technology in the gym except for the human machine. The human machine's the only machine not fully understood by anyone in the world. So until until we understand the human machine, uh, we want to we focus on that technology, and uh, we link together movement skill and mobility. Movement skill is the biomechanics of our our common athletic movement patterns isolated. So if you watch a kid. Uh, serve and on tennis, then attack the net and then backpedal and cross over and move laterally to lunge and rotate to return uh, a volley. Um, you can break all of those individual movement skills down and train them, teach them, improve them, rehearse them. 
So we integrate movement skills into our mobility, more skill and more range of motion, more ease of motion. Over on a, a, another chunk of the workout or another day, we integrate balance, which you know, you've know you gotta be out of balance to train balance, so there's instability. And so that links really nicely with training stability as a muscle stiffness property, the muscles making a joint stronger and setting each joint so, so that it can handle loading, um, whether that's running, changing direction and so on. So those, those are compartmentalized and trained. And then we start to bring those together into a whole body integrated strength routine as we go week to week um, through the program. And and so, you know, from a development perspective, uh, yes, to be able to, to develop most effectively, this is the, the suggestion, this is how you apply your methodology. And and I assume this is right up, you know, a, a part of that co a component or the outcome, the desired outcome is injury prevention. Uh, right to to create more resilience in in the body to to you know as you mentioned earlier on about the injuries that are experienced by youth uh, especially during that puberty phase that all ties in as well correct yeah that's it's one of, it's one of the key things for uh, kids getting ahead and setting kids up for success is keeping them in the game so of course positive experiences and uh, you, you talk to a lot of professional athletes that I've coached and, you know, what kept them in the game, of course, uh, camaraderie. And they, they tend to go to sports. You know, you if you go into speed skating, I'm not sure because what do you do for speed skating? Well, you train. You train for speed skating. You're going to skate in an oval for like, the you know, the next 20 years. And so <laughs> you find passion in working hard. You love to work hard and train and you maybe you just want to be successful. Um, other sports like soccer, basketball, baseball, football, rugby, hockey, uh, you don't say, I'm gonna go train basketball, I'm gonna train hockey, you say, I'm gonna go play basketball, I'm gonna play soccer, I'm a soccer player, I'm a hockey player, I play hockey. So pro athletes stayed in because they enjoyed the aspect of playing their sport, fun, um, they loved the camaraderie and friendship, and third, they really valued and felt good uh, about skill acquisition. They love the feeling of getting better and practicing their skills and getting better and seeing that put into effect. And so we really want to give kids an opportunity to set them up again, th things where they can get more proficient as they go. That helps them become resilient. That helps them uh, stay in the game. If we can control and move our body well, Strength training, uh, Dan, is about uh, load management. Now, we, we might use load management as a term uh, on a medical side from a volume. Uh, the Toronto Raptors, when they, when they won the NBA championship, their star player never played in back-to-back -back games the whole year. That was a load management from a volume of, uh, of uh, what that person is being put through. Um, but I, we can also use load management as a term. Really, when we lift weights, we, how do we get our body under the weight and manage that weight with gravity on top of us or with a cable or horizontal line of pull? And how do we manage the load of our body mass with gravity into the ground? You take care of our, our load into the ground. You take care of how we use our body to get under and manage the load that we impose onto us to strength train, everything in between happens nicely. If it doesn't happen nicely, then we're on the sidelines injured. And I, although, you know, philosophically, I coach athletes, when you're injured, you gotta find a way to improve. And if it's your knee, it's a long way from your heart and we're gonna get your upper body going, work on your mindset, visualization. Um, and it's true, you can, have the attitude to try and improve some things while you're injured. But overall, no, no kid gets ahead while they're on the sidelines injured. That's one of the key, key things to setting kids up for success and allowing them to graduate levels is not missing months of time injured and then spending months of time rehabbing just to get back to where they already were. And so, you know, there's a risk assessment as well, a risk benefit. And I would always risk uh, safety, taking uh, the benefit I can get, putting that in the kid's pocket that they have to build off of and keeping them safe for another day to train full versus pushing through a little bit too much and oh, oops, they're injured 
and now they're out for 12 weeks and no one can improve from the sidelines. Oh, great stuff, great stuff, great advice. So for the, the, the li oh, and, and a reminder, listeners out there, make sure that you're putting in your questions, okay? We're gonna be closing out here pretty soon. So if you have anything you wanna ask Peter, now's the time, now's the time, or forever hold your peace. And uh, by the way, uh, Peter, uh, Eve said Bruno walked behind you. Was that Bruno or is that a cat, man? Cause <laughs> that looked like a cat to me. That, that was my dog, Bruno. Uh, for those that don't know him, you can find him on social media. He's a handsome husky. He's in Vancouver, Canada, but he's a, a rescue from uh, Los Angeles. Uh, I volunteered for a group. We brought 146 dogs back from Los Angeles, flew them back to Canada, found adopted families. He needed a home, so I took him in. And so he's in the Canadian mountains, a little more rain, a little more snow, pretty happy about it. We joke because uh, he's laying beside me. People say when you have a husky, that breed, never take them off the leash because they'll just bolt and run. They just don't come back. And I never have them on the leash. And we, we, we laugh because we try and run away and hide and he comes and finds us. So he's, he's tied at the hip. I trained him not using any words, uh, which is interesting for folks. Not a fan of like yapping at my dog. Uh, just energetically, and we got in good sync in the in the forest and mountains where it's safe to do it. So that was uh, that was Bruno, and we joke. Uh, he's 12 years old, which is old for a big dog and a husky, a little bit old. Uh, we can still go out and hike over three mountains and put in a 12-hour day in the mountains. He'll do it, but I've never yet found an exercise in the gym that he will not sleep beside. <laughs> <laughs> He, he, sa he saves it all for game time in the mountains, Dan. So you'll, uh, you'll, if you see video of me on social media or pictures, you might see Bruno, and Bruno's always in the rest interval. And great at restoration. <laughs> uh, now that you mention it, indeed, do follow Peter because when you're out in the woods, it, it's it's catch come on, you know, catch each other running, jumping. But the the gym pictures, he's definitely in his recovery mode there. He's definitely in his recovery <laughs> mode there. So, well, well great, great job pointing that one out now that you mention it. So do follow Peter. Now, Peter, kind of kind of rounding things out here. Sure. In As a fitness professional, uh, for those folks that are listening, uh, that are maybe just entering it, or maybe they've been in place and it's like, you know, which way do I go now? Or do I want to specialize? Uh, do I want to... Uh, do I want to diversify versus specialize? You know, maybe I want to try some new things. What would you say to folks that, that you believe is the most rewarding part about training youth? Well, um, you know, for sure. And, I, you know, as people and caring people who used to raise people as a community and today, you know, uh, some of us will uh, are or eventually will be parents you know there's some instinctual things but you know coaching coaching is about teaching and developing people clients athletes in sport athletes and uh you know we always have extra room in our heart uh it's great to, i've coached four major uh i've coached four mvps from the major leagues and I say that to contrast to, I've also coached some guys who are trying to be pro athletes who didn't pick the right parents to be blessed with the right DNA, they're long shots. And there's something about that long-term development to really help people that need the coaching most. And if we go to kids that are six, eight, 10, 12, 14, they're just getting started. So they fall into that category. There's so much room for improving everything and to help them grow as boys and girls and athletes and enjoy sports success and then into leaders is very uh, enriching. If I say on a more simple matter, the shortest term is uh, the connection, uh, having a positive connection and uh, you know helping create a good day with them and just enjoying that interpersonally from both our shoes is wonderful. Um, helping them improve in the short term and seeing that and that changes two things. In the short term, Dan, the, 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 the specific answer is seeing them show up differently. Seeing them walk in a little bit taller, a little bit more confident, look you in the eye, shake your hand, or fist bump in a COVID era. 
and see them engage with the, in the drills uh, more professionally to be more confident and comfortable and respectful of the people around them. They start to, they, they, they stand taller, they show up differently and they can, you can tell inside they're proud of that and they're proud of the recognition you give them and they're gonna carry that forward. The other thing about training youth is when they're, when they're no longer kids and you stay in this career for a long time, you're gonna hear, uh, I get more recognition from, uh, from people who, who used to train with me and it'll be 10 years later. When I coached them through high school, they went on to college sport. Now they graduated, they're an accountant somewhere. They've got a, a husband or a wife and they've got kids and they're, they're just spontaneously dropping back into my life, thanking for what I did for them when they were in grade 10 or nine. A couple of extra things I said to them that I might not even remember till they bring it up. And um, that's affecting them positively with how they live their life how they guide their family, how they parent their kids, uh, and so on. It's, it's, you're, you're gonna get uh, enrichment and reward long, term, long way into the future as people reflect back onto the value that you gave them, and they might even have a more accurate perspective of the scope of that. Um, so stay in it for the long game, and uh, you, you'll receive more, a lot back from what you give. Wow, I, 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 if my camera was working right now, which uh, I mentioned at the beginning of the the webinar, had a technical function malfunction at the very last minute, you would see that I, I had a smile on my face so big just now when Peter was, was speaking that by the time you finished, Peter, my face hurt. Okay, it did. It actually did. I was like, okay, my face is starting to hurt right now. I need to stop smiling so much because that's just so, you know, so passionate. So amazing uh, what you just described, uh, and and I, I dare to say that anybody out there listening wouldn't enjoy uh, having that same experience. So thank you for sharing for sharing it, and as usual, sharing from the heart. So with that, uh, I want to jump into some some questions here. We have a, a, a few, and again, if you have them, boom, put them in there. Uh, I'm gonna fire off a couple, Peter, for you. Uh, Jack asks. When training a group of 10-year-olds, is it necessary to have compatibility amongst each other? Uh, well, there's to understand that, there's a great question, and thank you for that. And there's compatibility uh, sort of socially, personally, and there's compatibility on their physicality as, and their skill level. And of course, you know, yeah, you could have a 10 year old that has four years of training experience and a 10 year old that has zero and a 10 year old that's ma as mature as a 13 year old and a 10 year old that's as mature as a eight year old uh, physically as, as well. So no, when you, when you bring in a group, let's say you have a group of, uh, you know, 10 or 20 10 year olds, bring, bring them together. Uh, what I do during the drills is I form subgroups and there is some level of compatibility with how you engage and compete and cooperate in drills. Some drills that might be based on height, some drills that might be based on strength, some drills that might be based on, you know, so social, some drills that might be based on physical competence. But we might, I might break them in into, you know, a group of 20 10 year olds into uh, five groups of four, or, you know, four groups of five that are more like in the ways that you need them. So you can always find the compatibility by forming subgroups during a workout uh, where that's important to the uh, execution of what's going on. Uh, great, great question and great answer. Thank you, Jack, for asking that. Thank you, Jack. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Jack also asks, do you believe that having fun oops just lost it uh questions are flying in which moved my screen do you believe that having fun is the most important component to success and i assume that means success in in coaching youth athletes well i i i don't and uh you know there's lots of things that are fun it, it, we we want to have an element of fun we want to instill a positive relationship to exercise some of that's enjoying the process some of it's having fun you know in the in the social and the drill we might we do gamify some drills and warm up and cool down in fun ways so fun is an important factor in retention and continuity um some of it is is skill execution and skill improvement and 
Um, some of it is lear learning how to be focused and tough and mature and a leader. Um, so there's, there's a lot of benefits that aren't so much about fun, but we make sure it's in there. I would not say it's the most important, but it is important to have it as a, one of the, the main pillars that you have within your whole formula. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you for that. And thank you again, Jack, uh, for the That's question. Tough, man. It is, it is. They, they always are. Uh, now I'm going to, I'm hoping I got this pronunciation, uh, bleh, pronunciation. Uh, maybe if I speak in Spanish, it'll come out better. Uh, uh, I believe the name is Cheyenne and a uh, pretty name if, in the, and how you spell yeah. it too. So Cheyenne says, um, as a PT, I have found a niche in helping adults post physiotherapy and or surgery, I know a good percentage of adults who are injured as a youth. Do you know how many fewer injuries occur approximately when youth have gone through your training? Of, well, dramatic difference in uh, injuries. Uh, I don't have a, a specific quantification uh, other than we help keep people in and we also try and educate the coach and parent when that's accessible to us for that. Uh, first of all, kudos for what you're doing. That's a great specialization, that that gap between uh, medicine and rehab and full return to play. Um, the return to play bridge is, is a great process to be on and, and great, I, you're uh, astute in that you're, you're not only taking care of acute uh, injuries that were rehab, but some old chronic ones from when uh, they were young, and you're seeing it uh, cost uh, adults uh, today. And so, you know, think of this is this is our human vehicle. This is our human vehicle, our body. It carries this. I, I honestly, uh, you know, straight up from the heart, I find it unfathomable that people are disinterested in their own human vehicle that carries us because our world expands or shrinks by it, and we all have, uh, we all work our body, you know, if we exercise and use our body well, there's gonna be, there's gonna be things that don't go perfectly, even with the, the best plan. And, you know, we're out competing in sport. The one thing I try and do is always build my clients up, not crush them in that philosophy because life crushes them, sport crushes them, we build them back up is, as you, uh, you are doing in your example with the adults from their youth injuries and so on. Uh, so well, we we want to build them up and send them on their way. There's always going to be restoration. There's always going to be tuning up our body. That's a lifelong process to stay curious on our body and keep improving it, finding things from our past that need correction uh, and so on. Um, I, I will say when you know when when we stick to our beliefs and our philosophies and have that intention in mind. Um, there's been so many teams I've been associated with and uh, that have had the lowest games missed to injury and, and players that return and uh, sustain themselves. But of, of course, everybody, we all go out there and play long enough and challenge and test our body in the elements and in sport. You know, we're going to get some nicks and we're going to get some injuries somewhere along the way outside. My, my number one rule in, in the gym and the training space is, is, you know, same as medicine, do no harm. Um, we want we want to keep people uh, building up. Excellent, excellent. And again, uh, thank you, Cheyenne, for uh, excellent question. Last question so that we can uh, try our best to, to, to finish on time, knowing that we started a bit late, thanks to my computer. Uh, and I, now this one, I got to tell you, I don't know how to pronounce it because the first letter I don't even recognize. It's like an O with a line through it. Um, but let me take a stab at it. Oystein, Oystein um, asks, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask this question twice. Um, how strong do you find the factor of inner motivation to be in the skill development of youth versus top level adult athletes? How, so how strong do you find the factor of inner motivation to be in the skill development of youth versus top level adult athlete? Yeah, um, uh, two things before I answer. First, good for you for uh, striving towards that. I to, to have Dan's back, I mispronounce so many things all the time. I, I think I get away with it because people just say, oh, that's just the Canadian way to say it. <laughs> um, and so, 
Uh, and I had, I just needed a clarification question on the motivation. Was that inner, inner motivation? Yeah, that it's inner motivation. Uh, so how important, important is the factor of inner motivation in the skill development of youth versus top level adult athletes? Uh, you know, if, if I have, uh, if I have athletes that are adults and that are mature in their path, they're quite certain of the target they're shooting for. And they've got all kinds of motivation that they bring in. You know, my main job 25 years ago, getting them to train was difficult. Even professional athletes today, stopping them from overtraining is almost impossible. You give them a day off to rest and you, the next day, like, they come back to training and say, what, what did you do on your day off? Oh, I just took it easy and rested, coach. You know, uh, I just played tennis with my wife down at the beach. And then I did a little, just a light hike in the mountains, you know, just to like loosen up the legs, keep my mind fresh, you know. And they, they all want to do more because people think more is better. And so I find adult athletes have tons of motivation. Adult clients you know, they've been, they've been probably beat up and had a lot of difficulties and challenges and they might have been average motivation on this side. Maybe in other ways in business and finance and volunteer work, there's other things that they shine super bright that they're really driven for, but fitness and moving their body, maybe not so much. So it's rekindling that for our adult clients and them to believe in themselves and what's possible again making them know that their best days are ahead of them and so on. So big job with adult fitness clients, easy job with uh, elite, mature adult athletes, young kids. Oh, wow. It's, 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 uh, it's everything for them. You know, they might be in there because their parents want them to be. I, I really, if someone's coming in for a huge commitment and uh, a month's with me, I, I really talk to the kid and I make sure it's, it's what they want. Uh, they, they need to want it. And if they want it, then uh, some people say I inspire them a bit. And uh, I, you know, I'm, I'm blessed if I do, but my inspiration is short term. That's not the, the, the continuity of motivation that drives us. It's aspirations. And that's why I like your word inner motivation. So getting kids really focused on that why and getting them anchored, not so much to my motivation strategies and inspiration, but their aspirations and uh, turning on the switch that lights the fire around that, um, that's something that they can keep stoked themselves uh, a lot longer. Oh, brilliant, great stuff, great stuff. Now with that, thank you, Peter. We're, we're running out of time here to keep, keep things close to an hour so that we can okay. repurpose this. Somebody did ask earlier on if, if they'd be able to hear it again, absolutely. You know, it'll be on the PT Global website. We'll also send a link to, to Peter that he can share. Uh, we'll have it out in podcast, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to, to, to hear it again or share it with, with your friends and, and colleagues. So with that, Pete, a question for you, uh, yes, for the listeners, because here we go, Cheyenne, who uh, asked a question. She said, uh, I, I will be looking into more of your training philosophy. You know, she she said, thank you for stating this, stating the uh, sentiments of my heart and passion as well. So with that, how do they learn more about your training philosophy, Peter? How do how do our listeners find you, learn from you? Um, I think that, you know, as far as our a little bit on our training philosophy and seeing an inside glimpse of our training uh, centers for uh, kids, athletes and adults, uh, they can go to twistperformance.com. And to find out more about my coaching philosophy and current day endeavors and keep tabs with uh, education, which I do share uh, week by week on social media and announce on social media what new courses, certifications, mentorships, and so on are happening. Uh, I'll give one to keep it simple. Uh, Instagram is Coach Peter Twist. So find me on Instagram, Coach Peter Twist. Uh, you can find the version of me on Facebook if you prefer. There's a great community on both that, uh, that I indeed learn from. Um, and it's a, it's a very, it's a community also that, you know, people have aspirational goals and they're overcoming difficulty. And we try and uh, team up on how we can succeed at both of those. Perfect. Perfect. So, so again, social media, 
um, uh, website. Make sure you, you stay connected. Find them if you haven't already. I'm definitely a huge follower. You know, to at the you know we've we've just spent close to an hour with just some brilliant stuff. You know, your passion just bleeds through the camera. Absolutely love it. I thank you for sharing that time. Thank, thank all the listeners out there for sharing a part of their day, a part of their life uh, to tune in. And, 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 and learn or, or, or you know, be able to uh, take something away, maybe uh, sharpen your saw, any way you want to look at it, you're investing in being a better you. So, so thank you to all of you for doing that uh, on behalf of PTA Global and myself, on, on behalf of both of us. Uh, with that, Pete, would you mind you know, just kind of closing us out and, and, and taking us home, you know, kind of the huddle and the break here at the end? I will. I'll do that uh, in uh, two steps. Um, one, I, I do want to thank and recognize everyone for being here, be they a, a parent, a coach, uh, an athlete, a trainer, uh, for sharing passion and like-mindedness for this topic. And um, I, I will make a quick mention that uh, come October, uh, uh, myself and Twist are launching a new uh, digital education platform. We're going to specialize in child to champion, in sport performance, and in brain and body training. How do we build a physique and movement plus uh, build our brain, which that, that applies to youth and, and aging adults and skill athletes equally well. Uh, so that's a, a good thing to keep an eye for where you can really engage in me uh, thoroughly, engage with me thoroughly. For huddling up and uh, breaking us down. You know, I, I I like to end live lectures around the world with a with a slide that says, "Let your brightest light shine." And you know, that's not really the tough coach talk that has sometimes come out with. It's it's encouraging you uh, to really create your path, own your happiness, be a leader of one, uh, show up, and keep positively impacting everybody on your path. Your youth athletes. Uh, your, your own kids, the person you buy a coffee from that you're going to engage for 17 seconds with, they're all opportunities to give your best. And I like to say today, I give everything I have. Uh, what I keep inside, I lose forever. And sometimes I fail at that, um, but it's far beyond exerting effort, top effort in a drill, which is important, but it's the presentness, it's showing up kind, respectful, positive, trying to give our best to each uh, situation and, and those around us. Um, so I'm gonna, and I'm gonna leave one philosophy with you that I'm gonna pass on to you uh, if it serves you. And the intent is for serve you. Uh, I, I try my best to show up and respect everyone. I treat the person homeless on the street the same as the CEO. So I show up and uh, my intent is to respect everyone I don't give a crap who likes me. And there's a freedom in that and a naturalness. That's a permission for you to be 100% yourself, your most authentic, your most genuine, and don't hold back uh, to be quiet for anyone. Let your brightest self, your full spirit out. And what will happen there is some people won't resonate with that and they'll move out of the way. Perfect. Other people will love it and will want more and they'll move closer and your your path will really be defined by that it's very enjoyable because you're being fully you it's very uh rewarding because you're connecting with people who do connect genuinely uh with that and you will rise uh you will rise up on that your path uh will open for you wow now that was a huddle and a breakdown my friend uh i appreciate your time Thank you to all the listeners out there. Uh, thank you again for tuning in, closing us up, Pete. Uh, no, until and, next time. And if I if I can, I'm going to give one more one more urge on there for everyone. Thank you for circling up here. Uh, if you're passionate about this and fitness and coaching and sport and impacting people in some way, you know, really feed and nourish that and and look at it long term. Um, but don't let anyone knock you off your path. Stay on the path of improving so that you can improve others. Keep your passion. Keep your positivity here. Find a way. Don't let anyone knock you off this path. You're, you're on a strong path. Keep building it in, in how it suits you. And 
Uh, Dan, thank you, thank you very much uh, for the honor of joining you today. Uh, our pleasure, my friend, our pleasure. Have a wonderful weekend, everybody out there. Stay healthy, stay safe, stay positive, and uh, until next time. Well said, peace. <laughs> peace.